right, in today's video, I'm gonna be showing you how I rewired the Arcade 1UP solenoids and got them working on the Arcade 1UP modded pinball project, as well as how I added some surround sound feedback to the mix. Now, originally in this video, it was gonna be a super in-depth tutorial. I've shot this probably three different times and each time it ends up being almost 30 minutes long. Ain't nobody got time for that. So this is just gonna be a brief overview showing you the basic wiring, how I've got everything set up and I'll have a lot of resources and helpful information down in the video description box below. Links to everything I use as well as a lot of tutorials because basically there's a lot of people that have already done this. They've done better tutorials than I probably could ever do. So why not just put the ball back in their court? Definitely recommend you check out the resources down below, but let's get All to right, it. Let me give you a tour of the wiring and everything I've got for my solenoids and my surround sound feedback for this pinball mod. So first things first, I have a 12 volt power supply. So this is a standard arcade one power supply running into a female barrel plug adapter. Then I've got it split into a positive and negative. So I've got a positive and negative terminal power supplies here. So this is basically just little bricks that allow you to split out and adapt power. So this is basically gonna be all my power positive. It's gonna be my negative so I can branch out. So once this receives power, basically each and every single one of these ports now is available to tap in and get that power. So got the positive on this side. So here's all my positive once again, here's all my negative. So going here, we got our first terminal positive coming here to a Saint Smart relay board. This is a USB functional device that allows the solenoids to communicate with my PC and correspond and know when to power on and off and activate the solenoids. So I've got the red wire coming from here, going to here, so positive power. And then we got a negative black wire going here, so we got negative. So now this officially has power. USB cable goes to the PC, of course, but it has eight ports in total. I'm only using four because we're only having four stock Arcade One Up solenoids to use, but basically each one of these ports has three terminals and each terminal, I'm gonna be using two power cables. So you're gonna see four coming off of here. It's gonna feed into the second terminal port on each one of these. And then I'm gonna have four more power red wires coming off and those are gonna to go to join in with my diodes and my JST connections for these solenoids. So the solenoids themselves stock from the factory, they all come with different color wires that look like this. It's the exact same thing. Basically all I did was reuse some previous JST wire connections that I'd bought off Amazon for a separate project just because they're already color coded red and black and it's much easier to have everything corresponding to the same red and black color scheme as opposed to having multiple colors like this, especially considering these don't have a red or black, so it's hard to tell positive and negative, but you could reuse these if you want. All you have to do is clip the end and you'll have the bare wire exposed and the other end will plug into there. So basically what I've got here, and don't worry, I will show you a diagram because this is hard to visualize since I've got everything kind of tucked away. but you will have red and black. So you will have positive and negative coming out of the solenoid. I joined that with a diode because you need a diode. Otherwise you will get all sorts of feedback and nasty popping noises and things like that. Uh, if you really want some prime examples of this wiring setup as well as uh, why diodes are important, I definitely recommend check out B Kong's hour and a half long uh, little modding demonstration tutorial on this exact kind of setup where he goes into depth and detail. But basically all you need to really know is all your positives are gonna connect here on the end that has a ring, so right here. And then all your negatives are gonna be on the opposite. So your black wires, AKA your negative wires, whatever color you choose to use gonna be here. And your positive again, gonna be on the same side where the ring is. So basically what you're gonna do is you're gonna create something that looks like the letter H with the diode in the middle. So you're gonna have Positive coming from here, going to one end of the diode, and a positive coming here, going onto that same end, a negative from here, going to one end of the diode, and then a negative wire here. Now you can join that however you wish. I personally soldered those on, then put a crimp connector on, and then put some electrical tape on because I don't ever wanna to have to do this again. I don't want a connection to come loose. 
most certainly I don't want this thing to short out and freak out and burn my cabinet down because if anything was gonna fail on this machine, it's gonna be this right here. So make sure however you choose to connect your diodes, however you choose to, if it's you know spit and chewing gum or soldering and crimp connectors or twist on ties, whatever you choose to do, just make sure those connections stay tight and are tight. So, so this plugs into the PC via this USB cable. The USB cable I have drilled into a little hole underneath my KL25Z board here. Now I got my USB cable coming from here, as well as the one powering the KL25Z board. Both of those are going into a hole underneath the cabinet where I have my PC mounted underneath for cleaner install. Now the Saint Smart USB relay, this is what you know essentially communicates and tells these solenoids to fire off. However, you do need a secondary application running on your PC that actually communicates with this and lets it know how to correspond with the pinball tables you're playing. So this will tell the solenoids to fire, but without having DOF links running in the background, it won't know how to interpret the signals and the ball movements and everything that's going on in the play field. So DOF links is a little tricky. I'll put some download links as well as some tutorial videos on how to get that set up. And I will also include my DOF links personal INI file. You can't just drag and drop and download my file onto your PC. You'll have to change some things, mainly file folder structure but it should give you a good idea as far as what I had in my settings to make everything correspond and get firing. Additionally, so surround sound feedback. I also installed four 25 watt exciters. So I've got two up here in the front mounted underneath my flippers and I have two in the back of the cabinet, one here and one here. And these are wired up standard like a normal speaker setup. However, these give me vibration as well as sound while I'm playing games. So things like the ball rolling down the play field, a ball rolling down a shooter, things like that. I can now hear and feel those sounds as they're going on on the table. So my exciters come out to the back. So we got the bare speaker wire going into two different amplifiers. So we've got front and back speakers going into these cheap bare bones amplifiers that you can get off Amazon. They're like $15, $20. You'll, you'll find these in, you know, about every type of arcade one-up mod you can basically find on the internet thus to date, but they work well enough. Uh, just simple two channel output. So we've got our speaker wire for left and right. And then we've got our RCA 3.5 millimeter adapter going into a sound card. So my PC did not actually have a 7.1 surround sound audio card. So what I did was I got this USB adapter one, super tiny, very easy to use. It's like $30. So I've got my front two speakers plugged into here. I've got my two exciters for the front plugged into here and my rear two exciters plugged into here. You can also add a subwoofer and a center channel speaker. I started to and I just thought it was way too overkill honestly so I ended up removing them and that's why there's actually a couple extra holes there in the bottom but it's very simple plugged in USB underneath here into my PC and very simple plug and play you didn't have to install any crazy drivers or anything and once I had that installed all I had to do is make sure I went into uh, VPX Visual Pinball X10, whatever you want to call it, and made sure that I was selecting the appropriate sound channel and had 7.1 surround selected. And then now I've got surround sound feedback and noise coming three-dimensionally from the cabinet, playing all those wonderful sounds. Very easy to do. Pinball FX3, it's a little different. You do have to turn off the physics volume, but I'll again put tutorials and things like that on how to set everything up. I just want to give you the basic overview of how everything was connected. And you absolutely do not have to add surround sound feedback to your cabinet. You can settle with just the solenoids or you can do no solenoids and just surround sound feedback. Everything's personal preference. There's a million different ways to do this. This is just my approach and how I decided to do the haptic feedback and the surround feedback on my Arcade One Up Pinball Mod. Now, if you're wondering about these screws, that is what is actually coming from the mounting bracket that is holding my PC underneath the cabinet. So I just found a cheap, under desk PC mounting bracket on Amazon. Very cheap. I think it was like $20. It's 
screwed it on there. Yeah, it looks unsightly to have those screws coming up, but it's on the inside of the cabinet, so no one will ever really see it. All right, just to give you a little example of the surround sound feedback working in tandem with the solenoids. And if I go ahead and get the ball started. So you can clearly hear sounds like the ball drain and things like that. If I turn off my surround sound feedback and I just go nothing but solenoids, this is the gameplay sounds. So I'm not sure how well that'll translate across in video, obviously it's talking about audio, but I'm telling you, the surround sound feedback coupled with the solenoids, not only is it um, an amazing immersion experience because we got 3D spatial audio, but the additional rumbles and you know vibrations felt with the solenoids as well as those exciter speakers makes this so much more fun to play. Must you always be so good? And that is it for today's video talking about the Arcade 1UP modded pinball project. Now, first and foremost, I gotta tell you, I got this amazing baller installer. Definitely want to do a video on it because it is the absolute best user interface you could possibly want to do if you're doing a modded pinball project, specifically one of these. I mean, you'll love it. It makes setup such a breeze. Anyways, I got some other ideas for some future videos, but let me know in the comments down below anything you specifically want to see in regards to the modded arcade one up pinball project. If you enjoyed the video, make sure you hit that like button, share this video with your friends if you found the information helpful. And as always, thanks for watching guys. It really means a lot. Thank you.